before we bring you the next story, a warning, the details are disturbing and graphic. And while many people have been horrified from some of the details emerging from the investigation into alleged sexual abuse at the hands of Canadian junior hockey players, ex-players and media members are starting to speak out that these incidents are just the tip of the iceberg. When 16-year-old Brady Leibold signed on to play in the Western Hockey League, he didn't know his toughest opponents would be his teammates. Moving away from home was, was a challenge. Um, and all of a sudden, I'm in this uh, new community, living with a new family and far away from home and supposed to be living out my dream, but it turned into a nightmare very quick. Under normal circumstances, hazing is a one-night event, but Leibold says it lasted the entire season. Well, after practices, being in the shower, you know, multiple guys coming with uh, industrial-sized bottles of bleach and dumping it all over me and in my eyes and mopping me and poking me with broomsticks and uh, being locked in the, the, the sweat box on the, in the bathroom on the bus with multiple other guys on the team who were rookies as well with no clothes on. And one time I was in the bus uh, bathroom for five hours naked. And when he wasn't the subject of abuse during hockey operations, Leibold says young girls were the target after hours. A couple of the guys on the team had set up a webcam uh, with a laptop that was hidden in the room and broadcast a video out to uh, every player on the team on back what was called MSN Messenger. And, uh, you know, so now there's eight rooms of players, all four or five in a room, whatever it was, watching what's going on in the room. And this girl had no idea she was being recorded. And that's criminal. Where there was abuse he or girls sustained, Leibold says fear kept his pain hidden inside. People are scared to talk about this because what kind of ramifications is it going to have on your personal life, on your career? After just a couple seasons, it was just too much. I did not handle it very well. I became suicidal. I ended up quitting uh, the Western Hockey League on multiple different occasions. Taya McLaughlin, who worked at every level of hockey as a reporter for a decade, says the things Leibold experienced aren't unique to the sport. You know, I grew up in a hockey family. I grew up in this world, and then I went on to work in it. And I don't think it was until I actually exited that industry that you really actually understand how bad it is. McLaughlin, now in PR, says the recent investigations over alleged sexual assaults involving Canadian junior hockey players has brought a slew of confessions to her inbox, indicating that the code of silence, among other aspects of hockey culture, need to change. I'm not the first one to say this, but there's absolutely a lack of diversity which is likely where a lot of these issues are stemming from. Get more women on there, like minorities, uh, you know, not just in, I mean, leadership obviously to start, but like across the board, playing and like at the grassroots level. While Hockey Canada has mapped out how it plans to change its ways in the future, Leivold, who now works with young players like he once was, says he's putting matters into his own hands. I teach gratitude. I teach what it's like to be grateful just to be able to play this game and that it's not a God-given right. And just because you play this game at any level doesn't make you any more special than the next person.